to describe what happens in a neighborhood, you can take another point, which is delta x at time zero away. So here is a neighbor, any generic neighbor, x of zero plus delta x of zero. And the time t later, this difference vector delta x will uh, change. So this point will now be x, you know, the motion of the center of the neighborhood plus delta x time t0. And now we make an assumption which is, you know, a good assumption for most physical applications and there might be some, you know, some set of exceptions which you treat specially, but most of the time this is good enough. We assume that this flow is differentiable, smooth and differentiable. You know, we'll only use it as differentiable ones, but in our mind we think it's, you know, a smooth flow, C infinity flow, if you wish, infinitely differentiable. Then, uh, we can think of, you know, what happens finite time t. And we'll do it in two steps. And for some reason people get confused all the time in literature between these two steps. Um, the first one is, you know, this is a Lagrangian picture, but we also have Eulerian pictures. We have our, our equations of motion. So, uh, you know, when I look here, I have a, a velocity field that's tangent. So this tells me, you know, how I'll proceed. This is the vector field that defines dynamics on uh, an infinitesimal version of it, uh, a Lenin version. So I can ask myself, what are my equations of motions for the neighbor? And, uh, you know, V of this guy here, xt plus delta xt, uh, by assuming that this vector field is smooth, you know, you have Newtonian potential so the accelerations and velocity is derived by differentiating in once that's this velocity, generalized velocity. So I can write this as V at the cent center of the neighborhood plus the first term in Taylor expansion. So let me say this is ith component, ith component in d dimensions. So this is, you know, has d numbers, real numbers specifying it. Uh, and then times delta xj. Uh, both of them evaluated at that instant in time, whatever you are, right here. And this is, this is a matrix <coughs> very tasteful. Um, so this is now the time derivative of what happens at that point here. So this is plus delta x at that point in time. So how does this vector vary in time? <coughs> Approximated by the linear term. So neglecting other terms in the expansion. Then, you know, this cancels out, and we get 
that delta of x of t satisfies a linear differential equation. So I'll write it this way, i component matrix i, j, evaluated at x of t. Uh, times the uh, the ve vector at that point. So, so this is now linear differential equation for how this vector changes in time. And this matrix is very important to us. So, and you know, since Newton, I mean, everybody invents nonlinear dynamics in uh, once a month in every application. So in 19th century, it was a common subject to mathematicians and theoretical physicists. There was no distinction between the two fields. And uh, in first three quarters of 20th century, it was the domain of mathematicians, so they made it totally unintelligible. And then in last quarter, of uh, last centuries, other scientists and engineers discovered that if they use computer, they can understand this stuff. That's been codified mathematician. So they always, you know, everybody invents a new word for obvious object. So this is a totally central object. This is a rate of instantaneous shear of the neighborhood. It was probably introduced by Cauchy in his uh, theories of continuum mechanics in for three-dimensional bodies, but it's true in D-dimensions as well. So, and rate of constant is given by the matrix D IJ that tells you how the velocity in uh, i direction varies as you shear, as you move in the j-direction in the neighborhood. And uh, I've looked at literature and they're called stability matrix. You know, I have a scholarly, long scholarly remark about it and remarks at the end of this chapter, chapter 3 on stability. So it's called stability matrix or, you know, if you want to be really more precise, you can call it um, matrix of velocity. Remembering this is this generalized velocity. Any dynamical system is converted in a first order dynamical system where, you know, x, t is v of x and it's autonomous. It just depends very well but not on the time. So, in d dimensions. So it's not you know, your bicycle's velocity. And it's definitely not a speed which is magnitude of velocity. So matrix of velocity gradients. Now when you look at this object, its dimension is one over time. So it's some kind of rate. So it's a rate of shear. And one thing that it's not, it's not a Jacobian. which I'll define in a second. Jacobian matrices, if you are in your all coordinate systems at x0, and then Lagrangian flow puts you in the new local coordinate system, uh, dx at time t, you know, that's how Jacobian introduce Jacobian matrix and the Jacobian is the determinant of this matrix tells you how the volumes change when you do changes of coordinates and in integrals. So this is Jacobian. Now the reason why I say this, it's very embarrassing, but extremely good people who I endlessly respect call this Jacobian and the reason why they do this is because you know most mathematicians at least applied mathematicians, etc. They're uh, obsessed with epsilons. They like to see what happens if you have a solution and you go through bifurcation, epsilon around. 
So they write the entire books beginning from start to the beginning. So they actually never see Jacobian. In this book, in this course, we'll be always going finite to infinite time. So the important stuff for us will be Jacobians, which I'll explain next. Anyway, so that's a rate of instantaneous shear, and that's a central object of the theory. <coughs> 